stuff. Uh, I know from Jess's heat that she was capable of going sub 450 and that's a time that I've not gone in a while. So having her kind of just in front of me for the whole thing until the end really pushed me and I couldn't be happy with that outcome. Well, for me and my coach, we sat down and we kind of looked at her 400 just before the final actually and I was like, you know, I know her turns are one of her weaker points but her actual swimming stroke is incredible. So we really tried to utilise the turns and my breakouts and my rotation speed because I knew if I was going to get an upper hand or an advantage of length, it would be on my turns. Um, can't say I'm certain about anything. I think I'm reviewed in 2021 and I am borderline 8-9 given my results in my last one. So anything could happen. After Tokyo, I can move back to a 9, I can stay as an 8. Or if they change the system, I could end up somewhere else, you know. It's all just down to what the classifiers see fit and that's fine with me. When I first got moved down, I struggled a bit because for me, having been in an upper class, I felt like it was a bit awkward and I didn't want to perform as good as I could because I felt bad on the other competitors because especially my backstroke, that's quite far ahead. Um, but just this year, I've really been focusing on just swimming for myself. So regardless of where I come in a race, if it's a good swim for me, then I'm couldn't be happier with it. Hey, do you love swim swim as much as I do? Do you want hours of endless practice footage, race video, and a guide to the best pancakeries in the country? Then subscribe to our YouTube channel below. And follow us on social media at Swim Swam News on Twitter and Instagram. If we get a million followers, I might just eat a million pancakes. Only one way to find out.